Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our celebration on this, the sixth Sunday in the Easter season. And if you haven't remembered already, it's also Mother's Day. So you might remember to say a word of love and appreciation to all the mothers you know in your life. We begin with the words of the Easter greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to, to you, you all, all hearts, hearts are open, open all, all desires, desires known, and, and from, from you, you no secrets are hidden. hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you riches beyond imagination. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. When Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things with his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory the lord has made known his salvation the lord has made known his victory his righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. The Lord has made known his salvation. Shout with 
with joy to the Lord, all your lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. The Lord has made known his salvation. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it the lands and those who dwell therein. The Lord has made known his salvation. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord. When he comes to judge the earth, in righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. The Lord has made known his salvation. A reading from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is a child of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Uh, so we're starting this morning with a quiz. Three questions. Greg, don't shout the answer out if you know it. But you can nod if you know it. Then I can let folks know how Greg did on this quiz. So the first question is, without looking at your bulletin from the last Sunday you were in church, if you even have one, what is our church's mission statement? Greg knows. That's good. Number two, can you identify Allison Fury? Greg's pondering. Question number three, for bonus points, can you tell me how our mission statement and the name Allison Fury are linked together? Since Greg couldn't get question two, I, I've got no hope for question three. So, question one, what is our mission statement? It's printed on the front of our bulletin. It's compassion into action. That is our mission statement. And the word compassion comes from a word broken down to mean calm means to be with or enter into or join with, and passion, which means to suffer. So it means to suffer with someone, to take our life and join it with someone who is suffering or in need, and to take an action to alleviate that need or to alleviate that suffering. Alison Fury is Dr. Alison Fury. She's a pediatric physician from Newfoundland and Labrador. She's part of a group of medical professionals who volunteered to leave Newfoundland and Labrador and come to Ontario to help out with the pandemic here, to help spell off some of our healthcare workers who are so exhausted and burnt out. Uh, one of the things that you should know about Alison Fury is that her husband is Andrew Fury. Ring any bells? He's the premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. He's also a doctor. And together, they founded a charity uh, called Team Broken Earth. And it's a charity that originates in Newfoundland and Labrador that goes to places that have experienced medical emergencies where perhaps the system isn't available to provide care. They've been to places like Haiti after the earthquake in 2011, Bangladesh, and other places. So Dr. Fury, Dr. Allison Fury, came to help us here in Ontario. So that's the connection. Alison Fury gave up her life in Newfoundland and Labrador, a life one would argue was already given to full service in that she works in a clinic, she works in a hospital, and she gives other aid and supports this charity with her own life, and as well has a life as the partner of the Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador and all the requirements that carries, as well as having three children. So Dr. Fury, who felt badly for us, took her feeling badly and put it into an action. Her compassion turned into an action. She came with a team of others to help us out. And so when we think about a person like that, ask yourself, how have you put your parish's mission statement in your life today or yesterday or last week? or this month, or at all. Every morning we pray, hopefully, the prayer that I prayed this morning, uh, that all our hearts would be open, all our desires known, none of our secrets hidden from the Lord, and that we would perfectly love him and worthily magnify his holy name. In other words, our actions would big up God make people so aware of the God we serve that they would be inclined to want to serve him too. As we see from Alison Fury, we don't know if she's a Christian, but we know that she took seriously the command to lay down one's life for one's friends. And John tells us, Jesus says, you're his friends if you do the will of his Father who's in heaven. We're told we don't have a choice because we didn't choose God, but God chose us. 
And if we look at this gospel, what are we chosen for? <clears throat> it's interesting that the first thing he talks about is joy. He chose us for joy. He's chosen us so that his joy can be in us and that our joy can be complete. When is our joy complete? Hopefully it's complete when we're doing something for someone else, when we're taking that minute out of our life and just giving it over to someone who might be suffering, who might be in need, who needs someone to alongside them in whatever is going on in their life. So we're chosen for joy. And we all know Christians who are not joyful to be around. We all know Christians who are no joy in anyone's life. But if you look at the reading, the word joy comes up several times. He's called us for joy. He's chosen us for joy. How many times again this week do we see the word love? Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this. Bear fruit that will last. And that's how I know that you love one another. He's chosen us to love one another, not to compete with one another, not to dispute with one another, not to challenge one another or quarrel with one another. He's called us to love one another. He's chosen us to be sent out. Maybe we don't have to go from Ontario to Newfoundland and Labrador, but we have to leave our cozy little homes when we're allowed to do so, in the ways we're allowed to do so. We are sent out by God. It's not enough for us to be really happy with the church service we join or the sermon we hear or the music we enjoy. We are chosen to be sent out. Why has he chosen us? He says, I've appointed you to go out and bear fruit. And it's interesting that the verb appointed is the same word that Jesus uses when he talks about laying down his life, going to the cross, and going to his Father. He's calling us to be sent out. And he's calling us to bear fruit, to be an advertisement, if you want. Because we can't argue people into faith, but we can attract people into faith. I wanted to know more about Alison Fury when I realized what she was doing for us. And people will want to know more about the God we serve, when we're bearing fruits, not just in our own lives, but in their lives as well. And finally, anything you ask my Father, I will give you. But it's not just any little thing that you want today. Like, I want the lockdown to be over. I want to go eat in a restaurant. I want to go on a trip. He's saying, I've appointed you to go and bear fruit that will last so that my Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. So when we pray to the Father, we're praying for those strengths and abilities that will allow us to bear fruit that lasts. We're praying not that God will change his mind and give us what we want, but that he helps us to accept what it is he wills for us in his life. Ask for and act not for just what's good for us, but what's good for another or for a whole group of people. I'm sure Alison Fury would have been perfectly happy to stay at home and do her job and care for her children and be with her life partner. But she was called out to do something more, to bear fruit in an important way. People misinterpret this phrase that when two or three are gathered together in God's name, he'll just give them anything they want if they pray for it. But remember, it's so that we are able to bear fruit. So, God will not answer a prayer in which we ask for something that will enrich our lives when it impoverishes someone else's life. So what's an example of that? I'm not gonna give you the sports metaphor that I would pray that the Montreal Canadiens would win and the Toronto Maple Leafs would lose tonight. No, because although I would be joyous, other misguided people would be happy. But let's think about going on your holidays in the midst of the summer. Lord, please don't let it rain for the next two weeks. I want to have two weeks of a lovely, sunny cottage vacation. But what about that farmer whose farm is right next to where your cottage is, who's praying, dear Lord, send rain so my crops will grow so that I can feed 
my community. We can never pray for a thing for us, even when two or three are gathered together, that enriches us, but impoverishes someone else. Because we're meant to lay down our life for others. We're meant to put aside our selfish needs, our desires, put them aside to submerge them in the desire for God that all of his children have good things. And that's really what we mostly have to do. We won't always have that opportunity to leave our home, to go and serve in such a dramatic capacity as, as Dr. Fury has. But we certainly have the opportunity to lay aside our lives sometimes, to be compassion in action, to sit with someone who's suffering, who's lonely, maybe someone who isn't on your regular call list, or isn't someone you know very well, or isn't someone you particularly like, but you know to be alone and suffering, recently bereaved, ill, unable to get out, maybe in a care home where they can't be visited. We can each lay aside our comfortable afternoon having a cup of tea and chatting with our friends to be with, to suffer with, to sit with, to lay down our life for those people whose need is greater than our own. I want you to think for a moment if you can, of someone who's communicated that kind of love to you, that kind of compassion to you, without ever using the word love. Or think of the opportunities that you can have to communicate God's love to someone else without saying the word, without even accepting the kudos that come with it. Yesterday, when I went to check my post, when I opened my front door, I was surprised to find a little box, about this big, sitting on my doorstep. I hadn't ordered anything. My new Montreal Canadiens watch had already been delivered. And it was from the UK. I couldn't imagine. I checked again to make sure it was really for me. So I brought it inside with the rest of my post and opened it up. And inside was a tin of Harrods Earl Grey number 42 loose leaf tea. It is my favorite tea. I long for it. When I'm in the UK, I usually buy at least a half pound, if not a pound, at an outrageous expense after wading through the hordes of people at Harrods Food Hall because I like it so much. So a friend of mine who I'm in touch with and I've mentioned in my sermons before, had heard me say that I'd come to the last of my Earl Grey and would have to wait till whenever we could travel again. So she had gone to the trouble in her day under the restrictions in which they're living in London to purchase me a tin of this tea, to package it up and send it via Royal Mail so that I could have that little bit of her love to me. I heard love defined the other day by someone saying, love is to know what hurts someone else. I think our gospel today reminds us that to love is to know what he can heal someone else, to make them happy, and to use our life to magnify our God. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. 
that he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that by his power, wars and famine may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, Hear the cry of those in misery and need. In their afflictions, show them your mercy. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, Father, you restored us to life by raising your Son from death. May we who have received this gift always be strengthened to do your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray in the words our Lord himself taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and untiring in love all the days of your life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love, here and in paradise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> uh, brothers and sisters, uh, I have one announcement that stands out over the others, which is thank you for your continuing uh, support financially of our church, Please feel free to come in and avail yourself of a copy of Forward Day by Day or a copy of the Anglican if you don't receive it. I received word from our diocesan offices this week that our parish, St. John's East Orangeville, is about to receive an award and a special reg res recognition because we have raised the most money for Faith Works over its 20 year anniversary of every parish in our deanery. Believe it or not, we raised almost $45,000 just this parish, and that's the most in the Tecumseh Deanery. So with the email, I'll be sending out details of uh, the special recognition we're going to receive. They're doing a little gala night to celebrate FaithWorks, and we're going to receive a mention. And as well, uh, we can look forward to receiving a plaque from FaithWorks that we'll be um, putting up in a prominent spot in the narthex so we could all celebrate uh, the good works that we've done. So congratulations to you. That's a wonderful achievement and it's a great reaching out and it's proof that faith works. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Alleluia. <laughs>